The Opie and Anthony Show is back. Tighten your sphincter. Dan it. Dan it. Got Jeff Dunham coming in in a little bit. Oh, yeah, I just saw him on Fox. Ahmed Saves America premieres on uh, CMT this Friday, March 28th. Oh. But then it says out now on DVD. Mm. So it's premiering on CMT, but it's out now on. Out not on DVD. Oh, what? Works. Out not on DVD. Not hmm. on DVD. I don't know. I'm very confused by we'll this. We'll have to ask him about it. We certainly will. I watched uh, a reality show last night. It was um, it was uh, called Cougar Wives. <laughs> oh, I saw oh. some people tweeting about that. Dude, it was so bad. In what way? It's these uh, like old broads right. with these young guys. Right. And... Uh, the young guys are they're just gay guys. They're gay guys. I don't know what what it is. Like I think there's this maternal thing that if a guy's gay and doesn't want to go the gay with another man but wants some kind of intimacy, you know, right, with somebody, he just gets an old lady. Cause then you don't have to worry about like sex really and Is he getting uh, some cash out of it though? Maybe it's a I way to get some money. Nah, I don't know. Mm. There was one where the, there was one where where it was the guy was so obviously gay. And to uh, answer your question, Cougar, Cougar Wives. Yes. Oh, Cougar okay. Wives. Cougar Wives on TLC. Just another asshole. Oh, just a yeah. scumbag. Uh, with no one listening to him. Just talking about something I love it. Oh, okay. No little once a voice and no one will hear. Ah, oh, you gotta love it. Oh my god. <laughs> what is that? That's Hattie. <laughs> what? That's Hattie. Wait, wait, go back. This is on TLC? Uh, oh, yeah. yeah. Did it just start up? Uh, I think so. We it's might the have first a new I've show. Seen of it. I was watching it last night. Cougar Wives. We might have a new show to check out. All right, go all the way back. Oof. <laughs> Oof. Here we go. Hattie. That is extreme. 25, not too young? You are not too young. <laughs> there are a lot of people who use the word cougar to describe oh. an older woman who sleeps with younger men. That's true. I'm 37 years older than he is. Yeah. That's really disgusting. You can't control who you fall in love with. It's amazing what <laughs> falling in love will do for your self-image. The guy, the, the last guy was the gay guy. Like, how old? Really gay. the hell am I going to tell my parents? Oh, Dave Grohl. Yeah. You enjoy it? Yes. Skin. Yeah. I love skin. You have a lot of it. <laughs> it's oh. bothering me. It's going to bother mom. I love her. His you brother, know, is this Jimmer. real or is this bullshit? I don't know. That's kind of fake. That guy is really gay. We want to tell you. Tell him what you Um, he's got his chest out when he's beating. Uh, yeah. I like this guy. Yeah. You like him? Oh, she's out older than your mother. Mom, please, oh, look at me, please. Care please. Care Mom, 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 <laughs> extreme cougar wise. Cougar wise. Gotta be extreme. Everything's extreme. Yeah. Not Everything's nice. extreme. Your mic keeps going out today. Is it the mic? Yeah. Yeah. I, I thought it was too. my headphones. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow. Something's going on with your mic. What the fuck? Let me try this. Hold on. Ah, there we go. That preview clip sucked, by the way. It was terrible preview clip. <laughs> I, I know. I was just watching. Like, it looks like it would be a good show to check out, but yeah, there's this other guy that's kind of like this. Um, Antonio Banderas guy, right. and he's with this woman that's 90 years old, <laughs> okay. and her lips of are like... Of course it's fake. Oh, she shot up with collagen and stuff. And she really is 90? Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, of course it's fake. Yeah, I uh, think so. Jeff Dunham is walking down the hall. Oh, he's got a big case with his dummy in it. Oh, maybe he, he should do the puppet thing today, man. Oh, yeah? He's never done the puppet thing on our show. Oh, stupid puppets. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, let's ask for puppet. Oh. Yeah, you want to see the puppet? Jeff Dunham! There he is. <laughs> He's smiling like a chef. <laughs> he can come right in. Might as well. Yo, Jeff Dunham! Give him a seat. What? What happened? He just got to make a piddle. Oh, he's whiz. not ready. You got to whiz. Take a whiz. Drop a hot piss. There's the guy, though. He's right there. Where, where's he? Oh. 
Why go to the bathroom? Home. Why wouldn't he go, go to the, the bathroom old... before he comes down here? Yeah, we're going a little train. Uh, I watched that show, Eric says, and he's got a comment. So uh, we're in filler mode right now. Filler mode as Jeff Don takes a pee. Ooh. Eric, what's up? Hey, man, how you doing? Good. I, 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 this must be like a new season or something, because I caught that show a couple of months ago. Yeah. And it, it's either complete bullshit, or in order to make it real, they'd have to show them having sex, and then some kind of freak, freaking porno. <laughs> I've I never seen anything so stupid in my life. Yeah, yeah, it was it was pretty lame, but uh, it's just watching them kissing and ma making out is like. Uh. Well, people do anything to get on TV, so yeah. I you put the whole that. thing together and go, hey, you want to make believe you like old broads for a while? Yeah, yeah. And then the old broads don't know what they're even doing. It's perfect. <laughs> it's disgusting, like you guys said. I mean, either you're in it for the money, or you're gay or something, and that's. Mm. Well, you can't get regular women, and you got to go. For yeah, they, they. It a seemed to be like a problem thing. Would you? Would you yeah. eat old lady ass, oh, Eric? God, hell no. <laughs> hell nah. <laughs> what do you think old lady ass smells like? Uh, it's just, it's just I, as bad as their feet or breath uh, or scalps. Got something to do with the pens. They're all just dying slowly. Yeah. You don't need that. You don't nah, need any nah. of that shit. Would an old lady let nice. us um, smell her ass? Oh, come on! Let's go old school, guys. <laughs> What's the oldest lady we could get in here to bend over and we could smell her ass? What do you think? I would not uh, participate. We got to go old school. I take. Start doing e bits I'll again. take Iraq's e word for it. I might even when uh, he sniffs it because we e make him. It? Yes, of course. For the would. goof, I might ah. go for the smell. For the goof. For the goof. Oh boy. Uh, Sam, put it on the docket. We want to smell old ladies' asses. And by we, I'm not even joking. Opie. Get a promo and everything. <laughs> Okay, so are we looking for old ladies to volunteer assholes? Yeah. Okay. What's old? Like, uh, 35? <laughs> 19. <laughs> no, we gotta put a, uh, we gotta go at least, uh... Gotta be at least 60. Nah, I gotta go with retirement. 65 and 65. older. 65? Okay. At least 65 and older. You know, let's, uh, let's get a promo on the air to get them in interested. Of, I'm thinking a lot of baby powder. Maybe you could drag in your your you know your your granny from the the home. Um, we used to kidnap people to do bits back in the day. Yeah, no, I I I'm not gonna. Um, it's a family member bringing her over here. <laughs> I would just uh, let Iraq do it. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Eric. All right, guys, be good. All right, Tim in Boston. Tim. Hey, what's going on, guys? Hi, Tim. Hey. So um, I've had the pleasure of working with not two, but three tranny women in my um, career. Right. Um, none of whom really have had the, uh, have been able to explain why it's offensive, but I, apparently, um, as a homosexual gentleman myself... Um, I, I could the, hear it. You didn't have to tell anybody, sir. He's got the, the voice. The gaydar went off. He's it, got the voice. Instantly. <laughs> Very nice. Um, yeah. Jeff Dunham. Thanks, oh. Tim. Great phone call. <laughs> <laughs> All right. See you later. <laughs> Be good, Tim. Call back after. There that was goes. a wonderful phone. No, actually call back because we want to know your thoughts. We'd love to hear from you. That was Jeff, we were talking about uh, trannies because we, we're learning today that <laughs> you can't say tranny anymore now. Why not? I don't know. Uh, what? Uh, Jerry, Springer Jerry Springer got Springer in a little bit of trouble, trouble so oh, for it. He had to apologize and say, hey, I didn't know. He had a show called Trannies Twerking. Uh, twerking Trannies. Uh, twerking working tranny so the whole show was him saying tranny and then the lgbt well, people got mad because maybe with a y and a <laughs> that was it he was calling him gearbox yeah, <laughs> yeah uh good I news don't know. by the way this guy could uh bring a 62 year old escort so oh there you go we're also gonna uh, maybe we shouldn't tell jeff yeah. this one. we'll keep that one to what ourselves. what we might start sniffing Who's she in the corner? Is she going to be offended? That would be my wife. Oh, all right. <laughs> what? oh. <laughs> Maybe I'll write it down. Then. Yeah. It's just a dirty thing we want to do with wanna, older lady in her 60s. We wanna, we when, wanna, when is this? She, she doesn't have headphones on, so she won't be able to hear. We want to sniff old ladies' asses. Okay. okay why one? <laughs> because there's a show on, on a TLC called like Cougar Wives or something. So he's yeah. curious as to what they smell. I have, uh, I have zero interest. I have in no it. interest and, and When is this going to happen? we got to do 20 hours of radio a week. we got to fill up the time yeah. somehow. I have no need or want no. to do anything. I don't want to shake their hands with a fucking jingle.
of a charm bracelet. <laughs> 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 you know, never hear that great. you get jerked off. Charm bracelet jingling. And Nothing a, kills the sexual vibe. And a charm for each oh. grandkid. Yeah. Five little loved heads. <laughs> <laughs> What's happened? I don't know, <laughs> right? You just walked in for the love of God. Today, I, I got to ask you about Bruce Jenner. Because I, I did uh, watch the Kardashians a little bit, and right. they, they have a whole storyline that, that uh, you know, you guys are like, uh, have a bromance going on, or whatever the hell they call it in Hollywood. Bruce, people ask me this all the time. They go, is he turning into a chick? Is he, right, is that, right, no, right. Bruce Jenner is a friend of mine, and he is still that guy. He's still that athlete. He's still the great world's greatest athlete. He is the most guy's guy. I mean, he's a, he's a, a really accomplished race car driver. He's a, a helicopter pilot, a fixed-wing pilot. Uh, he, he knows all this stuff. He fly, and I don't know if you know how Crazy. hard it is to fly radio-controlled helicopters, but he's one of the best pilots out there. Right. Um, uh, and all he talks about, it, he gets out there and he uh, he's constantly doing sporting stuff with his uh, with, with his two daughters from Chris. Uh, Chloe and... Uh, no, no, no. Oh, no Ken, Kendall and... Oh. Kendall and uh, right, right. Kylie. Yep. I'm glad Kylie, I didn't know right. Kylie, yeah. And uh, it was funny. There was... Uh, I, I mean... So, you know, all that crap. And I think he wears the earring and does the long hair just to stick his middle finger up at the world. Go, you know what? I can do what I want. I, yeah. I don't know. But I I don't know. I don't get the surgery. But you guys are that close? Like they I showed don't, I don't ask him about stuff. I go, uh... Mm -hmm. But I, how do you guys meet? In, in the hobby store, the stupid radio control helicopter store. Oh, my God. <laughs> you, you were buying radio control stuff, and he was buying fake implant presses. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know what? Hobby. He said he's, He said after he ran off that racetrack, after the win in the Olympics, he goes, that was it. He never ran again. Wow. And he goes, he just... He never ran again? No, that's what he says. He just, I, you know, wow. he, he would speak at, uh, you know, he, he's, he's a uh, motivational speaker, and, I mean, talk about good advice for kids. I, I You know, some of it went out the window, I guess. But, um... No, it's like you know when you when you get past. Um, oh, oh, and that's the other thing I love. He says, you know, where he lives now in Malibu, the the paparazzi are always waiting for him, and he he thinks it's hilarious because what he'll do is, and he's a, again an accomplished. Race car driver, he knows what he's doing. So he'll pull out and he'll jump and he'll lean out the window. And he goes, "Come on, guys, this is fun!" And these guys are in oh, their geez. in their little piece of shit Hondas and that kind right. of thing, and they'll just take off going down the one hundred and one, and they can't keep up with him. Wow! <laughs> yeah, and it's like he just you know he flips the middle finger off and goes, "Come on, assholes, here we go!" Wow! Yeah, so what I, were you, you know, buying in the hobby store? It, uh, the, the, the same thing? stuff. Yes. So, so you I've fly been, those things too? I, huh? Since 1980, I was in on it from the very beginning. We, wow. We had a yeah. guy in uh, Queens about it might be a year now. Oh yeah, he got he, his, he took off, he took off his own head. Oh no, they're very dangerous. Are you flying I, those? Killed, yeah, yeah, they've killed. I think this year four or five people have died from those. So, things. Those yeah. are the ones you guys are flying. Yeah, yeah, they're big, not, not, dangerous things. Not the old school ones we used to fly. These do all sorts of crazy. You know, right? right? The, the 3D stuff. You do 3D stuff. They're flying lawnmowers. No, you get hit by one, you're gone. That's it. Do you do? the 3D stuff? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it's, insane. What's the no, 3D it's, stuff? Uh, it's fly, you're literally, take the helicopter, fling it in around the sky, and, and knowing exactly what you're doing with it. Yeah, upside It looks down. amazing. I mean, just look it up on YouTube. Do you, uh, you know, No, but do you ever get, I know, do you ever get it close to you, like these guys? Uh, I, I, there's some guys that are idiots. I yeah, mean, yeah. They're, but they're really, really good, and they know what they're doing. I don't, I don't, I don't, no, I'm not that good. Oh, man, Oof. that's scary. Yeah, no, it is, and that's what happened. That kid, apparently, apparently his dad was there, and the whole thing, it was just like, you know, he got too close to himself and, you know, lost I it. saw a photo. They showed that, you know, someone they sent us a photo. photo uh, and there's a, it was like a, just a giant, brutal. like an accident hit him in, in, the, in yeah. the middle of like the brutal. forehead. It was obviously an instant death. You got into it before all the electronic devices that keep you uh, yeah. nice and stable now. And, yeah. No, it was back in the beginning when, uh, yeah. But what they're doing now is that the physics are, you know, the power to weight ratio and all that and the physics that are going into it. It's like, it's, it's at, you see these helicopters doing things that you go, well, this can't happen. I know. Yeah. It's yeah. really amazing. Right. Look it up on YouTube. It's yeah. crazy. Dude, yeah, I've seen a few a videos. videos. Yeah. Are you doing the drones yet? Oh, yeah. I got it. has got a drone. <laughs> Is that right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I've got, got one, one with, Yeah, and I've got with the, uh, with the uh, uh, what's the camera? The GoPro? Oh, GoPro? Yeah, the GoPro with the GoPro on it with a gimbal and oh, uh, yeah. the whole thing. Yeah, and you can pre-program -pro it on your yeah. iPad where you hit the waypoints and it'll just yeah, fly it just the mission. Flies itself. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And then you go if you want it to come back home, you just turn off the transmitter. It'll fly back and land itself. Those lands where it took off from. Yeah, I'm telling you, the FAA is going to start to uh, yeah, they're gonna have uh, regulate to do something, this stuff. Right? Yeah, because you, yeah. you can just 
put, punch it straight up in the sky and go to 3,000 feet and 4,000 feet. And no, What have you no done problem. with yours? Shooting some cool stuff? Or? Yeah. yeah. Oh, as a matter of fact, yeah, we've, uh, uh, I have, well, the first time I was really getting good with it, I was playing at the, uh, somewhere around here, some kind of, uh, I don't know, the Enormo no, Dome. Picture, picture <laughs> what out of with more than 4,000 seats in it. <laughs> Could be one of those places. No, it was one, it was, I think it was, it was Giant the, Stadium. <laughs> <laughs> you know the tents, what are the tents, uh, uh, you know, where they have all the shows up in the Northeast. Gosh darn it, I can't remember. What's huh? it? Yeah, one of the, yeah, Bill. Oh, the uh, that that yes, the fucking the, the casino. Melody Ten or something. No, 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 no. no they're uh, I can't remember what they are. And, what the Mel like the Melody, Melody Ten, 10 okay. in Cape Cod like that. Yeah, that's what yeah, I it's been there forever. So uh, yeah, so one so one day uh, uh, I, I I first got it. I had the camera on it. I'm flying it around and nobody's there. It's before the show. It's the middle of the day. This is fantastic. And you you know I land it. I can see you can see all the cities and you know it's however high in the sky. And this so was after the show. I went wait a minute. I got this come home thing. So uh, there's like five crew guys that goes come here guys. We, we, you got to see this. And they all think I'm nuts. And I have this really nice quadcopter and I go watch this and so I just hit I punched it straight up in the sky and forward a little bit and it was a it was a clear night there wasn't a moon in the sky it was all stars and the thing just went out and disappeared oh shit and they're shit. like are you crazy I'm like no now watch this and I turned off the transmitter and sat down and mm, six seven eight minutes later it comes flying back and lands itself right where it took off that's are really you filming cool everything yeah, too? yeah you and it's all on it? the gopro yeah it's all on the gopro yeah. it's like you just like what that's the, amazing what the, yeah it's nuts i so. i i mine took off and i literally lost it for right. a while right and uh i'm looking around the sky i have the transmitter in my hand it's now it's dead silence i'm not hearing it and nothing i'm like right all right it's gone right. I, I don't even know so uh i turned off the transmitter right. and uh and I'm noticing this little dot in the sky. It was so tiny, so small as it's coming back. It had just started running out of battery, too, uh -oh. when it was coming down. Right. So it, it hit a little hard, right. but uh, totally survived it. I, I went inside instantly, took the card out, popped it in my computer to see where it went. Yeah. This fucking thing was so high up. <laughs> it was, there were, there were and, and I'm by Kennedy and LaGuardia and whatnot. There were jets below the the helicopter you're going to hear someday see that? where it yep. wasn't a it yeah. was, wow. you're going to hear someday that it wasn't a bird that took out the plane yes. it was some kids quad through the engine quad yeah. under the windshield of the engine or something like that but uh yeah. I looked at that. I was like, "Oh, that is really high up." <laughs> I bet they'll start programming ceilings into them, so you can't go above right, a certain you can't altitude. Go, and, yeah, but then yeah. someone will figure out. How oh, to, in a second, that. you'll be able to just override right. that one right. with some gizmo. Now that's a good way to, to do it, though. You program it so it can't go anywhere. I was wondering how would they control that. And that's the simple answer. Yeah, they, just, they won't mm. let you. Well. We grandfathered in with older equipment now. Yeah. <laughs> so back to Bruce. So I I, 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 say leave Bruce alone. It's like you know he's no he's a good guy when you get to know him and he uh, loves you according to the now, keeping it, up with the Kardashians. You know, that it, editing the, is is brutal for you, Jeff. Well, that, the, the 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 Kardashian thing. It's all about drama. All they're trying to do is create drama. Right. So they take a little bit of fact and just go with it. Go nuts with it. So it's a freaking TV show. You know what I mean? So, I yeah. don't know. what do they have like? Do, uh, do they have longing gazes? Oh yeah, all that shit. <laughs> <laughs> I think what? they actually. I think they actually make a heart at like one point. where they edit it, where you're just <laughs> looking, <laughs> and it makes it look like you're looking at him for much too no, long. No, no, I was on one episode. I was on one freaking episode. They make it look like you're uh, there hilarious. every other day. All <laughs> <laughs> oh, reality shows. And he goes, oh, "You want to be on another episode?" My answer is, "I got to see how the fans react to this." <laughs> yeah, 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 uh, I'm not sure. Right. Yeah, you and I are not an item. <laughs> what else you been up to, Jeff? We haven't um, seen you in a while. Yeah, well, the, I, I'm going around town promoting Ahmed Saves America. It's going to yeah. be on Friday night on CMT. And nice. uh, I took Ahmed, the dead terrorist, and we've uh, turned him into animated. Got one of the guys that wrote on uh, The Simpsons for 10 years. He and I uh, kind of got a, a, an outline of what the story should be. He then fleshed it out, and it's a fun story. And this is one of the first things I've ever done that's pretty much for the whole family. Anybody can watch it. So wow. most of my stuff's, you know... You, 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 it depends on your family if you yeah. watch it. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, this is fun, and it's a real pro-American thing, and Ahmed comes to this country and wants to do bad things to small-town USA, and uh, he ends up, you know, falling in love with all the trappings and all the stuff that we take for granted, and, like, unlimited buffet and all that crap. But, <laughs> I don't know if we asked you last time. Is he well-received in the Middle East? Well, we're getting ready to do a world tour, and this is a real world tour. This isn't like going to Australia and calling it a world tour. This is right. like a Russell Peters world tour. Yeah, yeah, we're starting out in uh, we started out in Dallas and uh, 
uh, they're going to go to the UK, which will include Scotland, Ireland, and England. Then we're going to head down to South Africa, and then we're going to do uh, well Iceland. I forgot that. And we're doing Iceland. Jesus. Then we're doing Dubai. And then we're doing uh, uh, Tel Aviv, Israel, and then we're going to go to uh, pa 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 What am I? Oh, um, Kuala Lumpur. Yikes! Uh oh. I don't know what airline we're on, but you know. Yeah, yeah, that one. But apparently, apparently, if I'm gone, they'll pay five grand. Yeah. Uh, you heard that this morning, right? right? No. They're going to give each family five grand? Five thousand bucks. That's what I saw on my little CNN tweet thing this morning. <laughs> the text message was brutal. We talked about that today. Oh, that's, that's how five thousand dollars. That's how they t- yeah. informed that's all the families. Yeah. But then we're going to go to Kuala Lumpur. Then we're going to Singapore. Then we're going to end it at Pearl Harbor. So uh, yeah, wow. so, uh, yeah, Israel. I hear, I hear in Israel they love Ahmed. I bet. Oh, of course uh, they do. Yeah, they'll they'll probably like that. I think the opening line with Ahmed's going to be, "What's with all the Jews?" <laughs> <laughs> and you have no problem doing Ahmed in these places. I don't know. I haven't done it yet. Yeah, <laughs> but you're going to do it, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, you know, you're not going to, you know, I, I make it a point by saying Ahmed's not Muslim. We don't know what religion he is. We don't know really where he's from. It's Middle East. Smart. Right. 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 He is, right. and we do. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> smart. Smart. smart on your part. Yeah, you though. have to. Of course. <laughs> I like the fact that you at least named him Ahmed, though. It's like, you know, some people, like, when they talk about, like, bus bombings or whatever, they'll name the, the, uh, the terrorist some politically correct uh, fucking white bread name. It's of like, course. On, well, Ahmed is not really... Ahmed is Russian. Ahmed is... Uh, would, oh. would have been correct. So I actually did that on purpose, too. I actually didn't notice that. Damn, yeah. I didn't notice either. Yeah, I'm sure no one really noticed no, this. No <laughs> but technically, so. I think you uh, win. I, yeah. I've, I've heard that uh, guys and I, businessmen in Iraq sit around and say, I kill you to each other and laugh. So I don't know. <laughs> Who knows? Oh, good luck. <laughs> yeah. Good luck with that. But we're turning it into a documentary. The whole point of it, though, is does a sense of humor translate? Mm-hmm. And I found that wherever we go, we all, of course, in the free world, laugh about the same stuff. We all have the same concerns. It's, you know, family and friends and job and health. And and uh, so the sense of humor does work if you're joking about the same stuff. But what's interesting, of course, is uh, products don't work. And you would, huh. I have to, you know, I, I can't, you can't make jokes about, some things they have. You would think in Ireland that they would have Lucky Charms. No. Right. No. They had no idea what freaking Lucky Charms are in Ireland. It's like, what? How the hell? Is that real? <laughs> yeah. No, they How did you know that? Did you, did you check this up first? Because I did a Lucky Charms joke, and they oh, just sat there and looked at me. Oh, man. <laughs> so you asked after the show? and <laughs> Yeah, I go, you guys know that Lucky Charms? Like, we don't know what that is. Look at this breakfast cereal. <laughs> no, oh, my God. Wow, man. <laughs> yeah, certain cultural yeah. things, right? It's so weird. Like, uh, the, the common stuff does, but it seems like that stuff are like, what's in our news? It's a like pop culture relevant they might not well get. see but, it's, but they they absorb all our entertainment i mean they, you know mm-hmm. uh, re, re, oh, they uh, with the uh, films and, uh, and television you know breaking bad and mm-hmm. I, all those big shows they get all that stuff and they love it right the kardashians yeah yeah <laughs> yeah so yeah, they watch all that stuff who knows i've never met any of the kardashians no <laughs> no only the jenners the Jen- which is uh chloe and i mean uh gosh darn it yeah uh, Kylie yeah. and Kendall. Kylie, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, and they're all, and they're all, that's Why didn't you meet crazy. the Kardashians? Because that's the other side of the family. The Jenners are all athletic and, and, you <laughs> right. know, and the others, they not. just, they just, <laughs> they just sit around <laughs> yeah, on their phones. Yeah. 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 Bruce keeps going, come on out to Malibu and we'll go, uh, what do you call it? Paddle boarding in right. the, the, something. You know. Yeah, it's like, what? I don't want to do that. Yeah, they just sit around, man. <laughs> They really do. That's there was I, one. There was one episode where they went to Greece, yeah. and all the Kardashians were. How do you know this? I, oh, he watches them all. Not all of them. Do it's it's not all show. the time. Every, every single one. I got five. Seen an episode. I got five. T- I don't love it. You fucking <laughs> love it. He is the. Biggest I try to keep fan. up on pop culture. Of course, yeah, of course. I try. Well, that's. Yeah. But the Greece episode, you're right. The Jenners were, you know, jumping off the boat, boat and, and doing all this shit, and the and the Kardashians sat around on their phones again. Yeah. yeah. Although the fat one uh, jumped off the boat. Oh. That was impressive. <laughs> I, uh, I couldn't tell you one Chloe, thing that's sorry. going on Chloe on show. Chloe jumped off the boat, no. finally. But and they made I it a big deal. I don't understand why people even watch these girls just sitting around. Okay, we, we were invited. I, I, I hate talking about this, but we were, invited <laughs> to, we, were, we were invited to the Christmas party, you know? And it's right. like, my, my daughters were like, what? I said, yeah, Bruce invited us, so let's go. So <clears throat> I didn't know what to expect. And uh, it's like, it's just surreal, because you see all this stuff on TV. And I, you know, I know Bruce, and I know his, you know, the Jenners, and, but we walked 
walked in, and there were the rest of them. And there's freaking Kanye standing there shaking hands. And I'm like, you, what? Really? Uh, you know, like, like two black people in the whole party, and he was two of them. So, I mean, and he was, everybody was as nice as they could be. Everybody was charming. The place was beautiful. It's like, all right, I get it. But all these rich people everywhere, I'm like, why am I, you know, I, 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 I there's, there's rich, and then there's, there's Hollywood rich. And yeah, there's, yeah. I got to show how rich I am. Yeah. And I'm like, we felt, I felt You're really rich, out of place there. Wow. No, 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 no. You're I was rich. just out I've of place. Got, I've crunched the numbers. No, no, no. You're no. doing I, well. I was way out of place. <laughs> You're I, doing look, well. I, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I drive a pickup truck for God's sake. <laughs> All right. So uh, uh, yeah, so it was just odd but fascinating, and and everybody was as charming as could be. So I got nothing bad to say about. I'm them. just amazed people watch the show. Like I don't, I don't even get understand why the numbers what, are so high. What the attraction real, is man. to watching. I don't know. It's nothing really ever happened. I don't because, hate them, or, or I don't hate them or like them. It's right? Like no, I just don't have thing. any opinion. Yeah. Well, it, it, to be on the front of Vogue magazine, I, I'm scratching my head on that one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. So I don't get that. <laughs> I don't get that. Kanye and Kim. How did yeah. that happen? What do they do to get on the front of Vogue? Uh, I don't know. They talk to somebody. <laughs> Yeah, they got good people, I guess. Well, the magazine business is pretty desperate, so... Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's deep shit. They, well, that know, was they know that's going to sell a, a lot of copies. Well, that was the joke I did uh, this morning was on... Uh, whatever I was on. And, uh, so Fox, Fox. Fox, Fox yeah. and Friends, yeah. And, uh, oh, I didn't do the joke. I did. It. Where else did I do it? I don't know where I did it. Oh, no, I did do it. I don't remember. Anyway, uh, <laughs> he goes... <laughs> too, much, too much press. Uh, what was the joke? Was that... Uh, uh, the, the, give the... What was it? Give the photographer some some. Oh wait, I got it right here. Hold on, hold on, hold on. No, it's a good. You're joke. putting a lot hold of on. pressure on this one. Oh man, <laughs> hold on. better be a good joke. Hold on, ready? Your mouth. Hold on, this is a good one. Do you see Kanye and Kim were on the cover of Vogue magazine? Some folks are upset, but I thought it was nice to see at least one photographer who didn't get his ass kicked by Kanye for snapping a photo. Thank you. All right, all right, all right. All right. All right. I can accept that. It's <laughs> topical, right? I, know, I, know. I can accept that. <laughs> Hey, are you right. still making stuff in your 3D printer? I, I I kind of reference you every time that comes up because you're like yeah. the you and Leonard are the only two people I know that actually have 3D printers. <laughs> yeah, well, they're getting cheap now and the technology's going crazy. But yeah, mm. I, I got a friend who's the uh, director of the new uh, Smurf movie. Uh, but it's 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 not a it's a total redo. Like they're not going back to the animated horrible thing with live action and animated. This is a f total remake. They're going back to the fifties, the real Smurfs. Um, but uh, he, uh, it's a Sony picture, and it's not a multi billion dollar thing. But he said it's in three D, and I go, do you have the characters in three D yet? And he says, "Well, yeah." And I go, "Um, give me the files." So I printed him a whole set oh, of Smurfs, wow. and they all the people on the that are making the movie went nuts because they never, you know, it's all on computers. So I said, "Right, here's, right." Here's they're all about a foot tall, and all the sets of. So it's like, yeah, it's a, it's crazy. We can you do print it out stuff. your own Smurfs. <laughs> Wait, what, what file did <laughs> you your 3D yeah. printer? Yeah, because you know, yeah, you're if rich. it's in 3D, he's rich. No, no, it's like it's, no. only rich guys can do that. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're, you can get a 3D printer for like eight hundred bucks. That's now. it. Is wow. that the the, the best thing you've printed out so far? No, no, no. Uh, some of the crazy stuff, some of the uh, uh, the, the files that the printer company comes up with. Um, a bicycle chain? Wow. wow. Yeah, it's like, how does that happen? And there's no master link on it. So, you know what I mean? Right, yeah, right, right, yeah, right. Yeah. So it's just to get... Yeah. And, and, and it's, it's printed all together. Yeah. Done, finished. Yeah, because... It's so weird that it can move. What's the material? Like, the material... This one, this is a... This is what... This is the lower end of the high-end machines, but most of them print in, like, ABS plastic. So, so. the... Uh, fi when you say they give you the file, what, what kind of specs are on the file? Like, it's obviously not just a photo of it. What, what exactly is it telling it's the It's just a three-dimensional file. You know, oh, it's, it's just a photo. So basically? no, like a three, like you know, when you see on TV when they drag the thing around and it's in three dimensions. Right, right. Yeah, that's all it is. So the, when you get the printer, they give you a whole bunch of things you can print out. Uh, just a handful just to, of things. Just to start your hobby. Yeah, well, yeah, just to make it's sure the hobby print, thing. To make sure the printer's working. No, <laughs> yeah. it comes. In, yeah, oh yeah, there's yeah, those yeah, files. Yeah. A buddy of mine said I got the file for the gun. I'm like, yeah, don't, don't put it on don't my computer. Give it to me. Yeah, right? I don't yeah. want it. Yeah, Why? He, Wouldn't you want to print it out just to see what it does? 
I'm not being serious. Well, yeah, I think uh, oh, it's illegal, when they though. find it on your computer. Right. Yeah. Is it officially illegal to do that? I don't know. I think in some states. Yeah, probably. Right. How, how, how big is the printer physically? Uh, and again, uh, that's, you know, you get what you pay for. So mm. the printing area is a big thing. Like the, the hobby printers will do like three by four by six inches. They're tiny, you know, so, oh, so, wow. but I don't know if it's that small, but this one is a fairly big one and it has printing area of 10 by 10 by 12 inches. Mm. So you can print something pretty yeah. big. How do you load that material in there? It's, it comes on a spool. This particular one comes on a spool. It's like really, like a uh, really thick fishing line. I don't know. It's like. What sixteenth of an inch thick? Mm. Okay. So it's just a big spool, and so it feeds it into it, and it and it um, melts it at five hundred and something degrees, and then it just spreads it out like frosting. Oh at my God. A ten thousandth of an inch thick. Do I have anything I made here? I don't think I do. Like uh, yeah. Yeah. And how but, long does a spool last? You say like when you made those Smurfs, how many could you make with one spool? Like one spool will do a solid block nine by nine by nine, but when you print something, you don't ever do it solid. Mm -hmm. So when you have an object, it prints like a a, a grid inside just for support okay so you can do it a really heavy grid or a, a, a not heavy how much does a spool cost 250 bucks but you can mill a lot of stuff like if you wanted to make this coffee cup hey is that mine that's mine thanks <laughs> uh if you want to make this coffee cup uh you know with a wall thickness of what a 16th of an inch that'd be like two inches of material mm. and a, a one spool is 53 inches which is nine by nine by nine but how do you program it you, that's that's so the cool. amazing part. Is let's say you have let's say you let's say let's say you, you want to do that water bottle. Is yeah. Okay. How easy so is the it? question is: Are you going to scan it with a three D scanner, right. and then you'll have that file, or are you going to build it in CAD on the computer? Mm -hmm. Oh wow! So it's it's better to build it in CAD on the computer because then it's the angles are perfect, everything's exact. But if you have a three D scanner, you can get pretty darn close. So you scan it, uh, you scan it, you have that file now. It's uh, you, an STL file. So then you take this file and put it in your laptop. And then the software figures out what the tool pathway is going to be for all that. You know what I mean? I love it. That's like, amazing. How's it, how's it going to actually build the thing? Yeah. Wow. And then it just builds it a layer at a time, a ten thousandth of an inch thick at a time. And the better printers do really thin, thin, thin layers that you can't even see the layers, but then you can imagine how long it would take to print something. Yeah, yeah. It's that, all like resolution. It's right. all the same thing as a regular uh printer on paper the right the, the more the detail you get in the higher resolution uh, the longer it takes to print but the better it's going to look that's right you're not going to get those ridges on there right or, and there's some guys in germany who came out with a printer now that'll print like a table that it's, it's got a platform like four feet by four feet by geez. three feet but the trouble is the layers are if you if you're not going to be there forever the layers are pretty thick yeah so it looks almost like um uh Aliasing. You need that anti-aliasing like you would on right. a well, regular Right. Well, it's layers, printer. so it actually right. looks like wood. It looks like the oh, grain, wow. so the grain of grain. wood. That's yeah. hilarious. Man. I'm surprised yeah. you don't have one, Ant. I know, yeah. right? Yeah. Oh, you, yeah. I'm, I'm telling you, you can days. get some of these now. You can get, and again, the, the, the quality of material won't be as good. The resolution won't be as good. It's You get what you pay for. So you can spend a quarter of a million dollars on one. and Is that it'll the high-end, high-end? High yeah, no? and it'll print in titanium. Oh, so you can build Jesus your own. Christ. You can build your own tools. Yeah, yeah. But the uh, low end what? of the the low end of the high end is like what? The low end of the high end, which I have, is like thirty five grand. Oh, okay. But those are coming down. That was three years ago. That's, mm. not, that's still a, that's less than you think it'd be for something such an amazing piece of technology. Well, what I've used it for, like we've built props for my specials, and it paid for itself in right. <clears throat> sure, yeah, in, in no time. Because to pay somebody in Hollywood to build a whatever, you'd pay twice that. Right. Wow. Yeah. Two fifty, and you can build out of titanium. That's crazy. But I have nothing to build out of titanium. I would literally just be making like dildos and giving them to girls You're here. <laughs> Club somebody with this, <laughs> or skin you your own. Oh yeah, but exactly. <laughs> yeah, you Dan's them. legs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Titanium. Yeah, titanium like the space shuttle. I got a call from Syracuse about you, uh, Doug in Syracuse. We got Jeff Dunham in studio. Go ahead. Hi guys, big fan of all of you. Thank you. Um, I was in Saudi Arabia last year. I was just passing through on a business thing. And fun fact, uh, Jeff, you are the number one American comedian in Saudi Arabia mm -hmm. because of Ahmed the dead terrorist. Wow. <laughs> yeah. <Jeez. laughs> number one on uh, what list? Yeah. I was at uh, I was there. I was in the airport lounge, and it just came up. You are huge. They love Ahmed. 
Uh, the catchphrase, the I kill you, just it's epic. They love it, and it just came up. So punch it out, just FYI. Thanks, man. I appreciate that. Did you know right away that Ahmed was going to be a massive No, hit? and I, I told this on on uh, uh, Fox this morning, their, their, the, whatever their live cast is. I didn't do it on the air. But um, a year after 9-11... Uh, Leno and Letterman were at least joking, you know, nothing funny about 9-11, but they were joking about those guys and Osama bin Laden. We hadn't found him. Mm-hmm. Where the hell is he? And I sat there and I thought, I know where he is. He's, uh, he's, he's actually killed, sort of dead, and he's been hiding in the suitcase with all my characters. So I built uh, the dead Osama. That was the first iteration. <laughs> but I thought, if I'm going to do this, I'm going to make sure I'm going to do it right. So when I wrote the material, I imagined that if there were relatives of victims... In that room, Mm. what would they be okay with? What could I joke about? What could I talk about? And what would they think was funny? So I wrote that material, and then I thought, I can't chicken out. I'm going to do this where it counts. So the first show I did was six miles from Ground Zero in Bananas Comedy Club, wherever it was. And uh, it was awesome. It was great. And it went over really well, because when I pulled him out, you know, this stupid-looking skeleton, and <laughs> Osama, and everybody laughed. So the material went great. And so then I used him for a couple of years, and then after that, uh, we are going to do another special. And uh, I thought, I'm going to pull that guy back out, but what if we catch Osama? Then it'll be dated. I don't want it to be dated, so I just turned him into a general terrorist Smart. that we don't, we don't know where he's from. <laughs> I don't know where he's from, and he's not Muslim. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. But, exactly. That's so smart. Uh, oh, wow. That's by far your number one character. What's number two, you think? Um, I'm obsessed with number two all the time. Exactly. Of course you are. <laughs> yes, he well, makes, little, he makes little things out of it. And, <laughs> yes. His butt's a 3D printer. Yeah. That's nice. Because we all know the number one of things. I'm always obsessed with that, the, the <clears> one that just is just short. Yes. It's well, a member of the if IRA. You go, if you go my merchandise, uh, Peanut is actually... Is Peanut out selling well, oh, Ahmed now? It depends. Yeah, I think so. As far as the dolls go, the dolls, the stalls, and oh, stuff wow. we sell after the shows. Yeah, mm. so Peanut is you sell actually dolls after the shows. Oh yeah, yeah of course. Wow. <laughs> yeah, of course. That's great. Yeah, the, uh, the the animatronic ones where you push the button and they talk and all that stuff. Yeah. Wow. So uh, Peanut actually outsells. I think it's because of women. Yeah. 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 You're a fucking empire. <laughs> Jeff is an empire. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, it's smart. <laughs> oh my yeah. god. Really is. Well, okay. I want. I, we're really hoping for big numbers on uh, Friday night because I want if yep. this thing animated thing takes off, that would be really fun. Cause Add another I, I don't know. part to the empire. Yeah, but it, it would be, it's you know it's it's not easy because mm-hmm. most people don't realize how long you know a good Disney film eight years. Oh, that's, that's how long it takes. From uh, how, how does it take eight years? But it yeah, takes right. six to eight years to do a good exactly. Disney film. Put mouse ears on the thing. <laughs> Fucking go ahead. <laughs> Talk. <laughs> but, but obviously Talk. you know. <laughs> but obviously what we're doing is not a Disney thing. You know, so we did it in a year and a half. And, uh, you know, it's TV animation, so it's a, it's a lot, you know, mm-hmm. high resolution and all that stuff. But, uh, no, it's, uh, it'd be fun. It's a fun world to, to delve in. I mean, uh, Grainig, Matt Grainig, holy moly. Yeah. Simpsons has been on 25 years now. Something like that. It might even be longer yeah. at this point. Yeah. So, Jesus. so wow. what is it? Gunsmoke? How long was Gunsmoke on? Yeah, yeah. That was I like think the that's still show, the number right? one. Yeah. yeah. Matt so, Dillon. <laughs> Gunsmoke. You watch that? I, well, I remember when I was a kid coming on. I don't think I was. I quite got it, but it was. You know, I remember it coming on TV. Your dad would watch it. Yeah, my mother and father. Yeah. That they used to like to fuck to it. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> That's nice. Yeah. Thank God. Well, was he was of, picturing the Norton sitting there watching but, but Better than the good times. <laughs> yeah. um, uh, Only when uh, Miss Kitty came on. <laughs> your wa- can I ask you your watch? Is that uh, the new? Uh, oh, what, that's a the, pebble. Oh, that's what is that? That's nothing to do with the new phones. Uh, yeah, but it's oh, it's does. connected to the iPhone, so you can pick any face. But this is one of those uh, kick uh, kickstart programs. Oh wow! Yeah, and they're doing really really well. Except when the i when the iWatch comes out, the Apple one, I think the, well, the Samsung really one's out too. Yeah, yeah, yeah we're yeah. getting those today. I yeah. think. What does that do? What exactly does it do? To, well, you can pick any face you want. You can pick apps for it. it it's you know this one I like the time and the temperature and you know but and the, oh oh you can go to uh, wait there's Mickey Mouse. But how do you type it? Oh, just different watch faces. But how do you type into it or can you do anything? Well, it gets all your phone messages and all your texts and all that. But you can't type into it. So instead of like, you know, pulling out your phone, you look at your watch. Okay. Look at your oh, watch. I got a text. All right, right. there it is. Yeah. I don't have to pay or attention do, to that one. Or do one. I need to answer this phone call or not? Right, right, like, right. No. I don't, I don't see it taking off. I don't know if that I does. Know, no. I know we'll play this audio back and... Yeah. Oh, it, it, look, it'll be huge. Do you think watch is really going to take I off? Think I think they will. I think because, Why, of, well, because of what Apple's doing with all... It'll do everything. I think it's right. going to be another... Unless they've totally dropped the ball. Well, what's the problem with taking your phone out? 
the fact that you have to take out. your phone out. I guess. Because the watch is such a piece of... Because uh, people have I nice never liked watches. watches, though. No, but I'm saying, like, you know, like if you wear, like, a, a $3,000 watch or a... Like, that's not going to replace a Rolex. That, this, like, will that technology catch on? Because you're competing with things that are such a fashion piece. I'm talking a lot. Mm. People but we, don't we have really a whole generation. Wear like, anymore. my kids don't wear watches. I was ever. just going to say that. People don't wear watches anymore because no. you got your phone. That's right. a good point. You know, it's right there. Of course. time is at boom. So they're trying to bring back the watch, basically. But what what Apple's always done, at least when Steve Jobs was around, is they created a niche that you didn't realize you needed. Right. So, you know, if somebody... I don't know. I think it's. I think it's going to be. Big. I think it's See, pretty cool. My yeah. TV earrings are going to flop. I have earrings that show popular TV programs. On. <laughs> what a horrid idea! You, you have to stand in front of two mirrors to get the angle. And oh, the well, sound goes yeah. right into your ear. What was the thing you ride on the uh, um, cock? Uh, yeah, that, that one too. I don't know. No, the uh, hilarious. Gosh darn it! What's that? What's that thing uh, called? You stand on your ride. Oh, the segway. Oh, the segway. segway. Right. You remember that? Like two years before it was coming out, everybody said. This is, nobody knew what it was. It's going to yeah. change the world, right? And yeah, yeah. I, it's been a boss for the most it part. It became a fun little novelty yeah. for a little yeah, while. That's right. And and, uh, and I was at a wherever we were doing a show, and they had two of them there, and the and the cops had them. And I'm yeah. like, can we ride these? And they're like, yeah, go ahead. So it was before the show, and it was a I don't know some kind of arena place where we could ride round and round and round on the outside where people walked. And I'm, I'm like, you got to get these. These are great. Me and the opening act, we're riding everywhere. And after ten minutes, I'm like, okay. Uh, all right, back to yep. the. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's like, that's all it took. Jump anything. Oh, yeah, 10, 10, 10, 12 can't jump it's anything, like, exactly. Yeah. It's like, what are we doing with this? I'll get yeah. a motorcycle. Yeah, mm. you're not. You're just standing there moving fast. It's right. good like, if you need yeah. it, like for work, like in a mall or whatever, but if you don't need it, as a leisure activity, I guess it runs thin. Yeah, when you see a cop going through an airport on one, you're like, you lazy bastard. Yeah, yeah. Walk, walk right. a beat. <laughs> walk your beat. <laughs> How much prep is there for you when you're doing like corporate gigs? I'm sure you do a good amount. I'm like you must have a lot of setup and like mic tests and all that stuff. It's got to be a uh... nah. It's uh, one box and or two mm. two trunks and uh, the, some dummies and one microphone on a stand. And no, I pride myself in making it really really easy. You know, I because you look at you know somebody like Seinfeld or somebody they just walk in, right. talk and then leave. And <laughs> that's the beauty of stand up. So I have crap. <laughs> but I, yeah. I, I, but then you look at like a magician. You're like, well, I don't have crap. I have a box. Oh yeah, a legendary Wid who's gonna fucking you know Wid. Oh yeah, absolutely. He's van, he literally would have a van full of stuff. Who's Wid? He was a, a a guy who worked out of Philly. He was very very funny. He was I a, think we take carrot about. top. Mm. And then add a hoarder. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and alcoholism. <laughs> yeah. Add a hoarder wow, and William man. Holden's liver. And, uh, and he was really funny, the way, man. Like, how, like, how much stuff did he actually have? Would you, I would say four or five giant, like, refri- like oh, refrigerator box God. size stuff. Full. Really? And by the time he was done, the entire stage was covered in crap. He's stepping <laughs> on his own props. He just yeah. throws them. Yeah, it was a disaster area. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, but you, can't, you couldn't help it. It's like watching a car wreck. It's like, yeah. this is like, I got to see this. Yeah, and he would just kind of antagonize the audience. He was much different. Was he than funny? Everybody. Yeah, he always, he, uh, comedians yeah. actually liked him a lot. Yeah. They give a lot of shit to those guys, but you know, if you're funny, you're is funny. Is he still around? You know, he is, uh, but he works at affiliate. I haven't seen him in a long time, but like, you know, people passing through will pass a message here and there. God, I kinda, in like, 1989, he and I were on the Jonathan Winters uh, traveling road show special on Showtime oh, or wow. something. <laughs> wow. 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 <laughs> 25 yeah. years Taped ago. Taped in... Uh, Taped in Encino, California, at a crap club that's now a pet supply place. <laughs> <laughs> I used to love those shows in the eighties. Yeah. Uh, all the different comedy shows that were on television. There were so many of them. Yeah, it was when you could set up a microphone and a stage, and uh, you had a comedy club, yeah. and then the comedy shows became the same thing. Yeah. And Judy, you booked a bunch of those, right? Yeah, Judy, my oh, manager, yeah. booked a lot of the talent. So if if you didn't didn't get on one of those, it's her fault. Well, I, I don't think I ever tried for the first one I ever tried for Hank Gallo. A guy named Hank Gallo got me. It was uh, might have been the Louis Anderson show, I think. Or no, hmm. Friday Night Videos was my first one. Oh, was I atrocious? Was that bad? <laughs> oh, I was such was a. Was that the douche. one you were like, "Hey, everybody"? Yeah, hey, oh, it was in Colin's studio. Voice. Yeah, it was fucking uh, like I, me character. Oh. Oh. Well, you didn't get hit on by Louis Anderson. Oh, no, oh, I damn. Didn't. <laughs> Did you really? Did, was he a good flirt at least? Yeah, 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 well, oh man, <laughs> oh, I was man. like, I, I, I got it. It was like it was at that time. Oh, I was like, great. I got to get married. I got to do something because I understand. I got the dolls, you know, and uh, <laughs> I, I get it. But it was. 
yeah, it was uh, awful. <laughs> yeah. How did he hit on you? I must have been uncomfortable. Just, were, yeah, just an uncomfortable thing. Did he thing. rub your leg? Like, no, no. Give you comedy advice? It was, <laughs> no, it didn't get that far, okay. but it was, uh, yeah, it was, there were a couple of hints. I'm like, hey, you know, I got to go. <laughs> oh. What was your, uh, what was your first oh. TV show? First TV show? Oh, Lord. That was Campus Comedy on in 1983 or 84 with Joe Piscopo as the host on oh, HBO. Wow. How did it go? Uh, I was still in college, and I was completely clean. I wouldn't say damn. And uh, I was the only person on the show that was clean. <laughs> and uh, I, I, it was great. I mean, for that time, you know, I was, how old was I? I don't know what it was, 1983. I was, Did uh, Joe try I to was kiss you? 21. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, he was okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Joe Piscopo. We like Joe. Yeah. Who else was on that show? Anybody oh, we boy. would know? No, nobody that, no, that uh, lasted. Uh, oh, wait, one guy. Uh, I can't remember his name. Yep, <laughs> one guy that went on to write, but he's the only guy. Oh, the, right. Everybody else, they were all college acts. Yeah, That's yeah. Right. Yeah. Isn't it weird when you watch those old specials and you see the guys that are, like, most of them went somewhere, but when you see a lot of them, like, you know, you know, and uh, Roseanne Barr, um, Rich Peters, like, what? <laughs> yeah, you're like, who? What happened to Whatever Rich happened Peters? Whatever happened to Rich Peters, I'm obsessed right. with what happened to guys from the 80s. You go to, like, the, the Punchline, Atlanta, or wherever. Because um, someone thought they were the shit. They were on the pictures, on the walls. Yes. yes. They were on that show. Or just the headshots. Like, where are they? Yeah. Right. Oh, yeah, you go to the Punchline in Atlanta, and I don't know if their walls are still the same there, but all those photos from way back. <laughs> when Denunzio yeah. used to run that club, and and it's oh my gosh, what happened? All Shirley these Hemphill, like all those old school yeah, acts, yeah. they're still there. And, and then it's great to talk to somebody like Judy or my other manager Robert Hartman, who's been in the business for years, and go, whatever happened to? And, and then hear the whole and you get story. an answer, right? Yeah. That's a horrible story. There, yeah, there was one guy that was a big, big headliner act. And I was walking through Home Depot with my daughter. Oh, no. And, uh, sir, can I help you? And I went, I recognize that voice. Oh, and I turned around and was like, no. I used to be the middle act and he was the headliner. No like, way. Oh, man. Oh, was he nice to you at least? Was, oh, yeah. And he recognized me. You could tell he was just humbled. And it was like, hey, oh. I'm trying to get back into it. And I'm like, man, oh. that's, that's great. But, you know, how's everything else? Yeah. <laughs> wow. Get so, back into it here? Yeah, yeah. I'm just trying to buy some hammers for my mansion. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Could you show me where they are? Because my no. rolls crushed no. my hammer handle. No. <laughs> <laughs> That's so wrong. What do you know? What happened though? If he's a headliner, how does it go wrong? Uh, it I, seems if he gets that point, you're all right. You can coast for many years. Yeah, I don't know. I I don't know no, what. Yeah. You know, most a lot of these guys you hear about it goes to their heads, and it just they start becoming demanding, and then uh. nobody wants to work with them anymore, and the, the clubs go, it's not worth it. The yeah. '80s headliners. It seems like a lot of them them who weren't good when the, like when 1990 around there came and that big boom of the 80s was over Gone. and bottlenecked it seems like that squeezed a lot because I came in 1990 so I heard about the glory days but I never that was the same with me I never was around for all that in the 80s when yeah. like when Seinfeld and Letterman right. and all those guys were uh, still doing clubs yeah so I don't I don't that's just yeah because when, when that when the bottom finally fell out of that a lot of those guys that all those clubs I mean, went away it was so hard to fill up uh, uh, all those shows that were on Showtime, mm -hmm. HBO, just all the network mm -hmm. channels on Friday night and stuff had comedy uh, clubs there on the on their uh, uh, on the screens, and then. What happens? Where do you go? Well, it was cheap programming, you know. Yeah, yeah. It, 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 it took nothing to put this on like yep. reality now, but uh, yeah. So anybody could have a show on TV. And uh, what was the one on Fox? Um, Comic, oh. strip live. Comic strip live. Oh, yeah. Did that? John Mulroney host that or no? Uh, that I've got a couple people uh, host it, but John mm. did it for a while. Who else yeah. did it? Um, <laughs> I don't know. But that originally it was at uh, Igby's. Do you remember Igby's? I remember the name, but I don't think I ever did. I never did yeah, the game. Yeah, Igby's Comedy Club, and then it went to the where? To the, it was the Laugh Factory. To the Laugh, Laugh Factory. Factory in LA. Yeah. Right. But that was great. And you know what I remember most about that show? After you were on that show, they gave you the most awesome whatever parting gift. What was it? <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. I remember they gave you a, t a television once, a little tiny Come television. Come on, really? Oh, yeah. It was like, nice. Fox is awesome. This is when Fox was just starting to become you know, Something. pretty important. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I remember when I was in Waco, Texas, going to college, and I went to when the Fox when Fox was first starting, and I walked in, and I was going to do the, be on the news or something, and they had a big poster in the lobby that said uh, Mutant Ninja Turtles. And I looked at that and I went, oh, that is never going to work. So, <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Phillips. <laughs> Do you know, I swear to you, I thought the same thing. I remember I was on 10th Avenue driving north, and I looked at a movie poster, Titanic the movie, and fucking dummy, I said, well, that's going to bomb. Yeah. I thought that was going to be an absolute bomb. And I realized I've never been I got more. an older one. I was in a mall, the mall in Waco, Texas, whatever mall it was, and this place called Blockbuster opened. <laughs> and they were renting VHSs for a dollar, and I'm like, they are never going to be so that. failing. Well, there's people that made worse decisions in Waco. Don't feel bad. <laughs> oh, yeah. The Branch Davidians, I swear. David yeah. Koresh, I swear I did a show at the at the compound once. <laughs> not really. Oh, but, that would be not scary. really, but... I have one of those, uh, I, I screwed up uh, and uh, had no foresight yeah. for a show. Yes. It, uh... It was a bus board uh, when I first got when we first came back to New York, and it said uh, if if one family doesn't kill him, the other one will. And it was a and I just went ugh, that show is gonna flop, and it was The Sopranos. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, <laughs> Whoops. oopsie, that was oh, kind well. of a big one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. My yeah. my uh, my uh, business manager many years ago, he goes so. Apple is coming out with this thing called the iPod. Mm. He goes, I got 10 grand. Should I invest? And I went, John, if I had an extra 10 grand, I would do that in a heartbeat. Mm. And I said, I, I can't do that now. And uh, I think that stock has split oh, two or three yeah, times yeah. now. <laughs> Just... Yeah, and he doesn't even talk to me about how much, <laughs> you, how much oh it went to. <laughs> what do you th- what do you but think that was my only good financial you. advice yeah. to yeah. anybody else. What do you think that ten thousand dollars is worth now? Oh please! How much did they cost back then? I mean, before the iPod, they were, I don't it, know what their stock share, was in nineteen. Yeah. I don't know what that was. Somebody could look. Safe to say, hundreds of. I have Apple stock. Lieutenant Dan bought me some. Thank God. Yeah, invested me in Apple. Did you, were you a ventriloquist when you started, or did you get in, or you always did that? You'd... Yeah, yeah, no, I started okay. when I was eight years old and uh, got the dummies and uh, started doing shows. And so by the time I reached uh, you know college age, I was still doing I was doing shows all over the place. And then during the summers or during the weekends, when people would go to college football games, I'd fly out to L.A. and do shows or dine, try and do clubs. And uh, so by the time I moved to L.A. in '88, I already knew how to entertain. I just it, it wasn't until I started doing clubs in L.A. that I realized I can't be a variety act. I can't be clever. I, I have to tell jokes and be funny. <clears throat> so then I just basically turned my act into what I thought would... Uh, I, I consider it now a stand-up act that happens to use mm-hmm. ventriloquism as a comedy. What happened to Taylor? I only worked with him one time, and I remember he won... Taylor Mason? Like, yes. Didn't he win some big show or something? Yeah, he he won... Um, America's mm. Funniest People or America's no, Talent? No, the other one. No. Uh, Ed McMahon. Oh, he's Star Oh, Star Search. Star Search. Star Search. Star Search. Yeah. He does, uh, he does a lot of... Uh, Three and a half stars! Church, what? <laughs> Church event. Church event. Oh, he's a religious guy? Oh, yeah. Yeah, oh, he's, uh, yeah. Okay. So he's, yeah, he's still working. He's uh, you know, he's a funny guy, he, and, he, and he's an entertainer. He does a lot of music and all that stuff. Well, that's what made me think of me. You were saying, like, he, he, I remember he had, like, a bunch of puppets on a... A few puppets at once on a stick. Like, like a couple of... Uh, oh, yeah, I've seen Yeah, that. I forget how he yeah. did it, but it, it was pretty... Mm. It's not my style, because uh, he was very clean. <laughs> oh, like, really? But, yes, but beyond yeah. clean. But I mean, like, you know, like you said, churchy, religious. Yeah, yeah. And I'm not really... Good Did you, was your first uh, uh, dummy one of those like you know knucklehead Smith or something? Yeah, you know, and uh, uh, the 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 company was called Juro Novelty Company, and they had ventriloquist dummies starting back in the I think the late fifties, early sixties, where they started making Jerry Mahoney, Jerry Mahoney and then dolls, Danny yeah. O'Day, and then Charlie McCarthy and Mortimer Snur. They were just Why these are they vinyl all Irish. Uh, yeah, that's, <laughs> that's a good so point. Weird. Yeah. I think it started with Charlie McCarthy, and then the other guys kind of named yeah. after. Um, but uh, they all the vinyl head, the doll body, the string in the back of the neck. So that company was bought out by a company by named Goldberger. Goldberger Dolls still makes ventriloquist dummies, and they sell them all over the world. Wow. And they're still in, and sales in the last few years have been booming. Uh, and uh, I'm the world has gone full circle. My first dummy was a Juro Mortimer Snurd, and now we're actually uh, and there. That's the last thing I printed on my 3D printer. They want to make a, an Ahmed and sell the little inexpensive oh, talking man. Ahmed. So I've been uh, printing uh, out the correct size Ahmed head that I'm about to send to them that they're going to turn into the uh, the talking. So Ahmed. little wow. boys everywhere I will be able to. <laughs> wow. Well, start he says because I, I thought career. you know what parents are going to buy this, and the guy goes, "No, uh, this is the request we get all the time for for." Ahmed. I'm like, really? He goes, yeah. He goes, the, and Slappy from, um, oh, what's that kid's, uh, the mm. kid's, uh, the mm. kid's scary books? Uh, come it's on. It's not coming to me. What is it? Uh-huh. 
Goosebumps. Oh, Goosebumps. Okay. Yeah, there's a ventriloquist dummy on there. Named, I think it's Slappy. It's Slappy? But a really scary ventriloquist dummy. He yeah. goes, that's our number one selling dummy, the scary ventriloquist dummy. I'm like, all right, well, we'll get Ahmed, the dead terrorist. Well, maybe, Parents uh, will love What a great Christmas <laughs> present. <laughs> what made you pick Mortimer Schnurd as the first one? I don't know. That's what I yeah, saw in the toy store and said, Mom, I want this. And it showed up. Yep. I don't know. What's what's the what do you what's your favorite ventriloquist movie? I always, I always am fascinated. Oh, yeah. I always paint the ventriloquist as like the, 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 the psychotic guy. guy well, what and else the puppet you yeah, that's true. I mean, give me a love story. I mean, uh, <laughs> no, it'd be great if the ventriloquist was like a real piece of shit, like you know, sodomite, and the the puppet was actually nice and settled him down. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Anthony Hopkins and in Magic, Magic, Magic was Wow, good. yeah, that and was Margaret a fun one. and Burgess yeah. Meredith. Yep. That movie came yeah. out in nineteen seventy eight or seventy nine, and mm. the story arc was uh, he was a you know a, a magician, and he uh, wouldn't wouldn't get anywhere with that, and then he started with the then he got the ventriloquism, got the dumb, he started doing ventriloquism. Then he started doing comedy clubs, and he got really good in the comedy clubs. He got an agent. The agent moved him out to L.A. He got on The Tonight Show. He started doing a bunch of talk shows. My career took that exact same arc up until the point he ha- offed his William Morris agent with a dummy. So I have not done that yet. Facts, right? Facts was the dummy. Facts, wow. right. And Corky was uh, Anthony Hopkins. Now, was he acting? Did they actually film him? Did, did Carson, or they actually use the Tonight Show set or just imply that he was on the Tonight Show? No, I think that it was just Burgess Meredith was his agent and said, okay, then you're going to do Carson. And oh, he just kind of yeah. talked about yeah, it. Yeah, no, it, it, it was a low-budget film. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I remember yeah. The, uh, the, I still remember when I was a kid, though, the, um, I wish we had somebody here on the computer because the, that, uh, the ad for Magic, which we've played before. Mm-hmm. Abracadabra, I sit on his knee, presto changeo, and now he is me. Yeah. Pocus, pocus, we take her to bed. Magic is fun. We're dead. Yeah, that was such a great, <laughs> and then the old voiceover, <laughs> Anthony Hopkins. Yeah. Yeah. But the dummy would it's do creepy. that. creepy. Jeff Dunham knows that. Well, the it was yeah. Yeah. Abracadabra, I yeah, sit yeah. on his knee. You know, it's like that kind of voice yeah. in the dummy. I bet it's got to be on YouTube somewhere. Oh, yeah. We've, we've played sure. it. Yeah. It's scary. Yeah. Let's that. get Jeff out of here. He's a busy man. <laughs> We're so done for the oh, day, yeah. Jesus. I okay. think so, yeah. You should get a plug in just yeah. in case, Jimmy. Yes. Um, well, Jeff will do his... Uh He's uh, Ahmed Saves America. It's on CMT this Friday. That's the 28th. It's at 10 o'clock and 9 o'clock uh, Central Standard Time. Out not, not on, on DVD. DVD. What is out, that? Not on DVD? What is that? It's supposed to be out now on DVD. Oh, out now on DVD. <laughs> what, the same thing? The animation? Yeah, yeah but, okay. but say, like, don't, don't pay any attention to the DVD and Blu-ray. Don't buy it. Just watch it on Friday <laughs> night. Yes. Friday night. We want big numbers. You need yes. the numbers. Yes. Let's get uh, yeah. Jeff Dunham some numbers this uh, Friday you. night. Go to jeffdunham.com CMT. on Twitter. Yeah, CMT, and, and again, uh, 10 o'clock, it's going to be, it's a lot of fun, and yeah, we want to drive the numbers, because I'd love for this thing to go beyond one episode. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Cool, very cool. Yeah. And myself, to prepare for my world tour, I'm doing uh, the Tampa Side Splitters, Wait, April let me have 11th this. and let me 12th. Have this. I'm, doing, I'm doing this promo here. Oh, okay. nice. Right. So, Jim Norton, uh, this is what's going to happen to Jim. He's going to Tampa on Thursday, April 10th at the... Cowhead roast and the Teppan Center. Yeah, it's good. it's a big it's a big night in show business. <laughs> oh, wait, what's the Cowhead roast? Well, he's a guy. He's a radio you know, guy in Tampa who's changing his name. So they're not roasting him on TV. Uh, I think they're doing it on Dat Tape and, uh, <laughs> t- <laughs> and emailing it to friends. So this is the Teppan roast. <laughs> what's the Teppan? The, the Teppan tep- is a place. Tep-pin? I think with, uh, it says Teppan. The te- the, the, yeah, okay, whoever wrote this up is a fucking moron. April 11th and 12th is the only one I care, but that's the gig itself. <laughs> well, what's Thursday, April 10th? It's a roast I'm doing. For Cowhead. For yeah. Cowhead. Who's yeah, Cowhead? He's you don't know. Guy in no one really knows. Really cowhead, okay, so cow- at the Teppan Center. <laughs> yes. But you don't care about that. Uh, no, no. Okay, at all. so the most his important name on thing it. for Jim is Friday and Saturday, <laughs> April 11th and 12th at Side Splitters Comedy Club. Yeah. And for tickets, you go to SidesplittersComedy.com. Or as this says, dot corn. Yeah. Dot corn. <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a printer, error, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. Then April 24th and 27th through 27th. Yes. It's the whole time. Thursday through Sunday. Oh, at Caroline's. I, yes. You know, I, that is fantastic in New York City. Uh, and again, you can go to ticketweb.com or carolines.com. Uh, th- congratulations on Caroline's. That's one place I never did well. It's a, it's oh, a wow. wait, performance-wise or a draw? I'm sure you drew there. You mean- I only played there w- once and did not do well. Hmm. Do you mean? Do you mean your your shows? Yeah, I oh, think okay. it was because I think it was way before anything. I think I I never did well in the city until th- things got better for me because hmm. it was like you know in that song New York New York yeah, I, if I can make it there I'll make it anywhere yeah. that drove me crazy for fifteen <laughs> years because I always sucked in the city. 
<laughs> I can't Always. make it anywhere. I, I would die every time I did a show in New York, be it, you know, whatever. Why, I, was, so, I don't I don't Because get that. I was the middle of the country. I was not cutting edge. You know what I mean? And so, congratulations to doing Caroline's, and I bet you do Thanks. well there. Oh, well, I mean, the shows, the crowd seems to enjoy it, them's that come. But, you know, <laughs> oh, I'm the 24th or 27th. 27th of going. April. I bet you Caroline's is regretting that dash. They're like, well, we should have just given him two nights. <laughs> he could have done the Thursday, Sunday. That dash is killing us. Should have been there for so <laughs> 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 uh, Brutal. All right, I'm going to go. Thank you, Jeff. It's uh, thanks, no, Jeff. good seeing you again, buddy. Yeah, thanks for cold. chatting with me. The always animated nice. film Ahmed Saves America it's premieres series, right? on CMT Friday night at 10. Perfect. Is it a film or a series? Uh, well, it's like it's one shot special oh, now. Okay. So we we hope that it'll go beyond. Yes. That's why we want the numbers. Does Gotta well. get the numbers. You make yeah. more. Yeah. Yeah. I think we're done. What the hell? We'll see you guys tomorrow. Right. Thanks, guys. The Opie and Anthony show has drawn to a close. Stay tuned to reflect, reflect, relive, and get the story behind the story of the finest moments of today's show. Sam Roberts, Opie and Anthony.